Hey everybody, how y'all doing this evening? This is your Faith Walk and Love Talk with Gina Brooks. We back again, amen. I want to really get into um, talking about mothers, right? Mother's Day just passed. And I want to get into um, a discussion about our mothers, amen. First of all, as always, I want to welcome the newcomers. Thank you for joining the Faith Walkers. You're welcome. And to the Faith Walkers that join me weekly, thank God for your being here tonight. Amen. Well, we get together every week to walk through the word of God, build our muscles and exercise our faith in the word of God. So I'm thankful for another week that we have an opportunity, a golden opportunity is granted unto us to come together again to walk out this thing in our walk of faith. Amen. So tonight, um, the title is on the Faith Walk and Love Talk podcast. We want to discuss, um, we want to discuss mothers, of course, but we want to talk about mothers, meltdowns, and identity crisis. And I want to kind of break this down into different parts because it's way too much to try to put into one um, study or one live. Okay. So this is part one. I have a lot to get into, a lot to share with you all. And we can look, we could just have a conversation. My comments are open and, you know, let's just talk about mothers for a moment, right? Quickly, I'm going to share with you a word of scripture. Um, the first one coming from the book of Matthew chapter seven, um, 24 through the 27th verses because it talks about foundations, right? And I don't know about you, but I feel like mothers are a vitally important ingredient in the foundation of family, in the foundation of um, households, and in the foundations of marriage, right? Society has tried to destroy all of that with all of these um new methods and new ideas that they're coming up with every day and trying to destroy the very foundation of households, of families, and of marriages. And look, if we destroy the household, if we destroy the foundations of the households, if we destroy the foundation, it not only affects the households, the families, and marriages, but it affects the communities, the neighborhoods, our nations, it affects the world as a whole. You all don't see the domino effect that is, that is playing out right before our eyes because we are a part of it. We are right in the middle of this thing playing out and the enemy knows it. He's aware of it, but apparently some of us seem to be asleep in this hour. Amen. So talking about mothers, um, and I know we just set aside a, a nice little 24 hours to um, to bless our mothers, to appreciate our mothers, to think on our mothers, to show our appreciation um, and to discuss our mothers, to love on our mothers, however you want to pull it out of the hat. Um, but I want to delve a little more deeply into Mother's Day and 24 hours won't cut it. As a matter of fact, this one live, as I stated before, is not enough to cut it. But we just going to get started. OK, we're going to lay the groundwork, lay the foundation and we just going to get started. Amen. So Matthew chapter seven, starting at the ver first verse, verse 24 reads, therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them. This is Jesus talking. I will liken him unto a wise man. So you become a wise man when you're able to not only hear the word of the Lord, but to do and act out and live out the word of the Lord. Amen. I will liken him unto a wise man, which built his house upon a rock. This is the part I wanted to get to. A wise man builds his house upon a rock. A wise man wants to build on something that is stable. And my Bible tells me that Jesus is the rock. Amen. Jesus is the rock of our salvation. We used to sing a song, I'll go to the rock of my salvation. The stone that the builders rejected. Jesus is that rock. 
Amen. So build your house upon a strong foundation. And if every home is built on Jesus, if Jesus is at the foundation of every family, of every marriage, of every home, you're going to be all right. You're going to be all right. You may not have everything you desire. Your wants at this particular moment may not all be fulfilled, but Jesus will provide your needs. He will provide your needs. He promised to be a provider. And the word continues in verse 25. And the rain descended and the floods came and the winds blew and beat upon that house. How many know that life can hit you so hard sometimes? The wind be blowing, right? The winds be blowing and the floods come. But the Bible tells me when the enemy comes in like a flood against us, that the spirit of God will lift up a standard against him. For us, he fights for us. He stands between us and the hard place. That's what Jesus does for us. When the floods came, the winds blew and beat upon that house and it fell not for it was founded upon a rock. I'm going somewhere with this. Stay with me. I'm talking about our mothers on this evening. And I would just like to say, because I didn't get to see you all on Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day, dear heart. Happy Mother's Day, beautiful. Happy Mother's Day, my sisters. I love you. And you are an important ingredient in this life. God created you for a purpose. Don't let nobody tell you that you are not important. You are. Verse 26 reads, and everyone that heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them not. First, he talked about the hearers and the doers and how they will be likened unto a wise man in Jesus' eyes. This is in the Lord's eyes. Amen which built his house upon a rock. But 26 goes into everyone. This is the other side of the coin, the flip side, right? And everyone that heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them not. We have to be hearers and doers, not hearers only. We have to also do what the word of God instructs us to do. Everyone that heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them not shall be likened unto a foolish man which built his house upon the sand. We ain't even got to go to the beach to know how sand works. You ain't got to go to the beach. But if you ever went to the beach, you ever walked on sand, you notice how you sink. Every little step you take, you sink in and you sink in and don't let it be wet. It's almost like muddy quicksand. Depending on how wet it is. But everyone that Hear it, the sayings. He didn't say not here. Everybody that hear it, the word of the Lord, and don't do it, you don't obey it, you don't follow through with it, you don't live it out and walk it out. He said, you are a foolish man which built his house upon the sand, which means you are standing on sinking ground, sinking sand. You're not on a strong foundation. And it's foolish. It's foolish. You want to sink? Because you're not stable and you will sink. But become wise and find yourself building your house, building your life and your lifestyle on a foundation of truth, on a foundation that stands, on a foundation that is a rock, that is stable, that is secure, that is a guarantee. Build your house upon a rock as a wise man do it. 27 reads, and the rain descended and the floods came. This is the second time the floods came. You staying with me? Stay with me. The rain descended and the floods came and the winds blew again and beat upon that house and it fell and great was the fall of it. But why did it fall? It was not on a stable foundation. Why did the house fall? It was not built 
on a guaranteed foundation. It was not built on a strong foundation. It was not built on a stable foundation. It was built on something that was weak. It was built on something that was going to give out. It was built on something that was temporary. But only the foolish, Jesus said. This message is in red letters. Jesus is speaking directly to us. Directly to us. He says, be wise and build your house. Build your families, mothers. Build your household, mothers. Build your marriages, mothers and wives. And, and want to be mothers and wives. Build your house on a rock of security. Build your house on a rock of safety, on a rock of defense. Jesus is that rock, but we are created in his image and his likeness. Therefore, we have a part. We should have the rock working in us. So we should have a part of that safety, those safety measures working in us. It comes with the nurturing part. We should have a part of that, that protective measure. I know men, with it ain't men's day yet. Men got the, the protective coverings and the security and all of that, but we have a portion of it. We have a portion. We have an innate portion of that. Because guess what? Men are not always around. And if you're living in this day and time, you can look around. <laughs> you ain't got to go far to figure that out. But I understand, and I'm not demeaning and degrading men by any means. Not by any means. Because Look, we're going to get into that. I'm trying not to go there because I will go there and I'll be heavy into that because, yeah, my dad, I love him. My husband, I love him. Both of them are one of a kind. But like I said, I ain't going to get started. I'm going to hold that up for the next part. We ain't close enough to Father's Day yet. This is about mothers. This is about our mothers on tonight. So I have another scripture. Remember that particular scripture, the sharing was coming from Matthew chapter 7, verses 24 through 27, where Jesus is reminding us about the foundation, right? Of how we should build on a strong, a sure foundation. Zechariah, right quickly. Uh, I stole or borrowed, not stealing, but I borrowed this particular verse from Zechariah um, chapter four and verse 10. Uh, the particular story that is going on at this particular time is, you know, about a little something different. Right. But I pulled from this particular verse to talk about our mothers. And if you read along with me, you will see why I referenced this particular verse. Not the whole verse in its entirety. But like I said, if you read with me, you will understand why I, why I referenced this particular verse in regards to our mothers. Amen. Zechariah chapter four, verse 10 reads, for who hath despised the day of small things? For they shall rejoice and shall see the plummet in the hand of Zerubbabel with those seven. They are the eyes of the Lord, which run to and fro through the whole earth. So that particular verse, what I want to pull from that verse is this. For who hath despised the day of small things for they shall rejoice. That's all I want to pull from that verse right there, because I get, if I go, um, into the full entire verse, it'll take us away from the topic. But in mentioning that, Zechariah 4 and 10 reminds us that we should never, ever despise the small beginnings. We should never, ever look down on the day of small beginnings. Don't look down on it. Don't be ashamed of it. Um, don't feel that it's bad or it doesn't have any value. Our small beginnings have value. Our small beginnings are vitally important. It is the small beginnings that the Lord rejoices over because he loves to see 
his new work begin. He loves to see how the new journey will begin in us. Yes, he wrote the plan for every one of our lives. Absolutely every one of us. And he loves to see what we do with the tools that he give us to use. He loves to see how we reach out to him. I'm going, I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself. Okay, okay, okay. God devotes his attention to the baby steps, those insignificant efforts that we think are insignificant. Um, those little, those little small beginnings, those little mediocre things, you know, in the way that we started out. And we sometimes we make jokes about um growing up on like uh, pork and beans and hot dogs and uh, growing up where you would have, sometimes you would have uh, jelly without peanut butter, right? Sometimes you would end up making um, barbecue sandwiches or some, some folk grew up on uh, mustard sandwiches because sometimes you're hungry, but you don't always have the meat or the, you know, the vital ingredients that is needed. So you work with what you have. And the thing that I love about mothers, how things used to be, we didn't become handicapped because we was missing an ingredient or something. We didn't become, oh, woe is me. No, we worked with what we had and we made do with the things that we had. And it's the mentality, survival of the fittest, that um, the um, Afro-American nation and, and, and others worked with when they didn't have coming along. And I want to go back just briefly because I don't want to get tied up in this, but just briefly like during slavery days when they would, um, they would cook huge suppers and, and, you know, lay out lavish meals in the big house. Right. But when they came back home to the cottage, they only had scraps to feed on. But guess what? The things that was considered scraps and the things that were tossed out from the big house became a delectable meal for us in the little house. Amen. This message ain't about slavery. I ain't, I ain't going there. I ain't going there. I just want you to understand that do not despise the way that you came. Don't despise the way God brought you. Everybody's story is not the same. No, I didn't come, you know, from a, 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 a lavish family background. I didn't come with a silver spoon in my mouth. Everything that we had, the little that we had, it was earned. It was earned. You know, they had to work for it. Wasn't well, nothing handed down, nothing passed out. But anyway, God devotes his attention to the baby steps, like I said. And those things, the insignificant efforts that we feel like, you know, don't really mean much. And we feel like it's insignificant. The little things that may not even be remembered by other folk. But God has his eye on those little things. Because we always think, you know, the bigger it is and the grander it is, the more extravagant and lavish it is. Even like a lot of these churches, right? We think God, oh, God must dwell there, right? They got the big cathedrals and the fancy glass stained windows and, and can seat thousands. And they got fancy um, equipment and all these things. And you got to walk a mile to get up to the pulpit. No, 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 no. God don't think like we think his thoughts are as far from ours as the heavens is from the earth. The word of God reminds us. So no, God is not impressed with all the glass stained windows, you know, and all the, you know, everything it stares with remote control and all the screens and all the flashing lights and all that. He is not impressed by all of that, but it's those little insignificant things, those little insignificant places where God dwells, where God rest and what God um, decides to abide. Remember how Jesus came on the scene? Did he come in some great big lavish temple or was he humbly born, stashed away quietly in a little manger that people thought, you know, it was insignificant. It wasn't important. And who would want to have a baby in a manger? But that's the way Christ introduced himself on the scene. That's the way he came. That's the way he came. He took all of his greatness in a, in a swarm of humility, in innumerable 
amounts of humility and presented himself to us and made himself accessible to all of us. Because look, had he came that way, a lot of little folk, look, little folk that was broke, little folk like me that's down here, you know, fighting and laboring for everything we get. Maybe we wouldn't be, you know, able to reach him. But he made himself so low. He brought himself so low, so humbly low and accessible that he will be accessible to the man out there on the corner who don't even have a roof over his head. That he will be accessible to the prostitute on the corner that's trying to put food on her table. That he will make himself accessible to all of us. Poor, broke, hand-me-downs, rich, well-to-do, whatever. He made himself accessible to all of us. And that's what I'm reminded of. A lot of times when I when I just think about mothers in general, not just my own, it's not the moments that we think, you know, when we have it all together that God honors the most. But it's the times when we still look to him and ask his direction. It's the times that we feel we're the most weakest and we lean on him a little more. It's, it's, he appreciates our desire to yet long to hear his instruction as any father would, right? As any father would. We long for those moments when you reach out, you know, to still be needed or to still feel wanted, right? We don't want you to get all up in yourself and feel like we hit a certain age and, you know, you, you toss us away and lock us away in nursing homes because all you did, you know, you did whatever you could do. And now I got it. I got it. I can take it from here. But you discard us away like we trash. You discard us like we don't, you know, have any use anymore or like you don't have any use for us. God doesn't do us like that. What if God dealt with us the way that we deal with each other, the way that we deal with our parents? If you still got your mother in the earth, love on her. If you don't call her every day, if you don't show up every day, make it every other day. But don't let a week pass that you don't show up for her in some way. I tell you, I won't go there. I'm, it ain't Father's Day yet. I'm, I'm sticking with the mothers, sticking to my guns. Love on your moms because I promise you, she is irreplaceable. There is nothing that can fill that void. There is nothing that can take her place in the earth. I don't care how many people step up and be a mother figure to you. And I love them. Trust and believe that. No disrespect. No dishonor here whatsoever. But those that still have your natural born biological mother in the earth, the woman that raised you, the woman that gave you birth, even if she didn't give you birth biologically, the woman that loved on you and took care of you and raised you. Love on her because you will miss her when she's gone. Ain't nothing in creation like your mother. So from birth to 100 years old, from the cradle to the grave, the father never ever gets tired of listening to us, his children. He never, ever gets tired of providing for us, never, ever gets tired of always being there for us. He may get tired of our rebelliousness, of our stick neck, stiff neck and our hard heartedness. He will get tired of our disobedience. He will get tired of us not listening and disregarding him and disrespecting him, he will get tired of our dishonor to him. But to love on us and to show us that he loves us, he never, ever tires of that. He don't ever take a break from being the father. And I'm not talking about our natural fathers right now. I'm talking about our father in heaven. Hallowed. Is his name. His name is holy. Hallowed means holy. Our father, he continues to always provide, protect. He builds us. He secures us. 
He heals us, restores us, uplifts us, encourages us, delivers us, loves us, and carries us. Do anybody know he yet carries us? We don't never get of a certain age where he stopped carrying us. Oh, my God. The father, the love of the father, the father, not a father. The father, the love of the father is never ending. And it is unconditional. And there is not a thing in the earth that has ever been created that can fill the void of having the father in your life. Nothing. Nothing. Everything you try will never measure up and it'll only be temporary. Nothing will ever measure up. And that's why the things that I'm saying in relation to us being in the image and the, the likeness of God who created us, the father who created us in his own image and his own likeness and the things that he built inside of us that came inside, built internally. A lot of these things um, that God gives us on a regular basis or does for us on a regular basis, he put it in us. It's innately in us. It's, it's born in us naturally. Right? So look, um, my mom's gone. And now I feel like I fight to rediscover my identity in so many ways. I feel like many people do. It's, it's not discussed, but, you know, in many areas of our lives. And there's another shift when your kids are grown and gone. Then it's like, who am I now? Because you shifted again, right? What part do I play now? So I've, I've noticed that I want to get intimate for a moment with you all and just talk about um, the different things. Because, look, Mother's Day just passed, right? But those of us whose mothers are gone before us or have gone before us, it always hit us a little different. My mom had a heart of gold, just, just naturally, um, as a giving loving woman, right? Always giving of herself, but most importantly, she had the heart of God. So there was a balance there. The natural and the spiritual, she balanced it exceptionally. I don't, look, it ain't enough time for me to talk about my grandmother, who is her mother. Pastor Francis E. Thomas. If I start talking about her, we definitely, I ain't gonna be able to talk about both of them in this moment. And, and not keep y'all here forever, right? But let's just say the, the apple didn't fall far from the tree. Amen. So thanking God for my grandmother and her life, Pastor Francis E. Thomas. But um, speaking on mothers and, and my mom in particular, I want to say um, happy Mother's Day again to all the women out there who have given unconditional love and sacrifice to God's favorite part of creation, children, right? I'm including all women, whether um, you're, you're, uh, whether you're natural, naturally um, birthing children, whether you're adopting, whether you're surrogate, foster uh, moms, those who are still trying to be moms, will try in the future moms, uh, in the process moms, and done moms with the birthing process, right? And those that are done. Amen in Jesus' name. But I pray we covered everyone. Um, but I want to just say happy Mother's Day to all of you. I read somewhere yesterday where this woman said, I get so upset. I hate it. I absolutely despise when other people say happy Mother's Day to me because she was like, I know they mean well, but I'm not your mom. You know, she only looked forward to hearing it from her children. But please don't feel that way. Please, don't, I want to encourage you all, please don't feel that way because the way society is headed, they are trying to, um, they're trying to take away your rights as a mom. They are trying to destroy this identity thing is trying to destroy um 
us even being able to be regarded as mothers. They are trying to do away with Mother's Day. It's actually a, 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 a law going under effect. But you all are thinking because it's talking about equal rights that because, you know, you want equal rights for this and equal rights for that. But the devil is so tricky and sneaky that, no, he has all kind of things under this umbrella of equal rights. It goes far beyond what you could even imagine. It goes into taking away the rights of parents over their children and protecting your children from different things, from, uh, I'll say, from certain surgeries that will change them from what God birthed them to be. But as little bitty children that don't even fully understand preschool yet, they don't even really know they're here. They are trying to make it lawful that the law can override you. As a mother, that would, oh my God, that would break your heart. That the law would override you and take away your rights to a child that you brought into the earth or a child that you raised, a child that is your own and tell you that you don't have rights and you don't have a say so over what goes on with their lives. You don't you don't know where society is heading with all this foolishness, but the enemy has a plot and a plan to just take all of these things that we are thinking that we are innocently trying to put into effect. And he's taking it to a whole nother level. It would blow your mind, honestly. And I will try to um, probably do a, a live on that in the future, in the very near future, because they're trying to push it through. God block it in Jesus name. Anyway, I don't I don't have time for both of these subjects on tonight. Back to mothers, right? So the love, the sacrifice, the selflessness that mothers were always known to have. This in society today, I I beg to differ because they that's why I said society is pushing so much foolishness that we don't even know our places anymore. The mothers that I'm used to, like my mother, and the way she taught me to be are selfless, not selfish. Everything ain't about you. We would always, just as my mother um, was an example before me, put everybody first, put the children first, right? Take care of the husband first because he's going out to support the family and making sure the bills are paid and make sure you got a roof over your head and protection and security. He's providing all these different measures. I told you I ain't going to get into Father's Day. But the mothers, the mothers are there to provide love at all times, to sacrifice at all times, providing compassion, strength, charity, mercy, grace, even long suffering. Long suffering is patience, y'all. And if a mother don't have patience, who gonna have it? Because most fathers don't. It's a little limited. Amen. But all of these things that God gave us a taste of because he's full of all these things. But we just have a taste of it so that we'll be able to um, to teach, to teach the younger ones. And the Bible teaches it has scriptures and, you know, about the mothers teaching the younger women and the younger women teaching the children and all these different things, so on and so forth. And it goes on down. But. Like I said, the 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 gentleness. Um, we have a measure of boldness. We have measure of authority. Because look, we have to come up a, a, against a lot of different things in motherhood. My mom did. There's more, but all of these things are wrapped up and packaged in a mother. A mother is truly a gift to have. Cherish her if you still have her. Value her. Love her. With all of your being, all of your heart, mind, body, soul, and strength. The way we love God, we should find ourselves loving our parents equally so, as much, as much, as much, equally as much. Love God more. I'm going to stress that. Love God more. But at least, you know, try try to measure that love. That way you know you won't fall short. That's all I'm saying. That way you know you won't fall short. And I'm not saying it has to be, you know, you equalizing 
God and your parents and put them on the same level. Please, please, please don't misconstrue nothing I'm saying. I'm just saying, honor your parents while you still got them in the earth. Love on them. You will miss them dearly. Somebody said time will heal all wounds. I say God heals all wounds. But even when that wound is healed, you miss them. That don't go away. My mom passed in 2009. I miss her every single day. I do. She was an example and an example of holiness, of a virtuous woman on a natural level. She was perfection. On a spiritual level, she was perfection. And a lot of people fall out with their moms and they, they cut them off and they stop dealing with them and they don't talk to them for years. And I don't know how. I don't know how. I pray and I talk to God every day. And I, I also repent. I'm like, God, I don't know if I loved her enough. I don't know if I loved her enough. I don't know if she knew that I loved her with my everything, but I don't know if, if, if I made it known enough, often enough to let her know just how much I love her. If I had an opportunity, I'm telling you, if I had the opportunity to love on her again, to love her more, you don't miss your water until your well run dry. I'm going to try to keep it together. I'm going to move along. <sighs> love on your mother if you still got to love your mom. All of these things are wrapped and packaged in the gift that we call mother. They are our first teachers. The only thing that I feel personally that interferes with that, that full package of being a mother is an illness. Is illness. It has to be a sickness there. Whether it's mental sickness, physical sickness, a societal sickness, or economical ills. Yeah, whatever messes with that mom package and you feel like you didn't get that full package in a mother, there was some type of illness working there. Because moms are internally and vitally important to the whole entire family dynamic. Mothers are important to the world. They are. And even though we set aside, you know, like I said, one little 24 hour day, it's never enough time to celebrate your mother. It's never enough time to love on your mother. It's never enough time to do enough. You could never do enough. You could never do enough for the things that your mom does for you. It would never equate. But I encourage you. I encourage you to do as much as you possibly can, because if she's ever removed from your life, if you can never see her again, if you can never hold a phone call, hear her voice again, if you can never see her eye to eye, hug her, kiss her, be in her presence again, you will truly miss that more than anything in life. You will. You will. You will. There's nothing in life more important except the presence of God. Being in his presence, riches and all that stuff, fame, never, never, not, no, not even on a scale, not even on a scale, not even on a scale. And if you say it is, then you have that illness that I'm talking about right now. Like I said, whether it's mental, physical, societal, or economical, you, my dear, have an illness and you need help. So like I said, it is too much. It's too much for one video. But for just a few minutes, I want to share some moments that stood out to me about my mom before we end this live. I started out with scripture and we started out with talking about the foundation and how mothers should do their part in building a strong foundation for their families, for their marriages, and for their um, for their households, right? So my mom, um, right quickly, my mom loved people. My mom, and I'm jumping, uh, I'm jumping to the end of the story, like before God took her, and then I'm gonna tr try to go back to the beginning of when I was little. Um, if there's enough time. But my mom loved people and she served in excellence. I watched her. 
People called her for prayer and counseling all times of the night. She didn't have a cutoff point. They could call her at, you know, from whatever time during the day to 12 midnight to 3 a.m. in the morning. She was always available. She was always present. She was always accessible. She was always there, always present for other people, always there for other people. We saw this, me and my siblings, there's nine of us. We saw this coming up. An open heart for people. She gave her last. We didn't have much. We was the families. I'm going to get back to that. Yeah, we were the family, nine kids. Mm -hmm. We were, was the families that grew up. One of the families that grew up on the, the pork and beans and hot dogs. Life was so, was so um, rough for a minute. Our Sunday is, is, is a long lasting minute, but our Sunday meals, when you talk about a feast, was crab macaroni and cheese and fish sticks. It was. I despise not the day of small things. I'm not embarrassed. Many a days I ate syrup sandwiches, syrup, syrup, however you want to call it. And it wasn't because mom was not providing. It wasn't because dad was not providing. My dad, for a great... Um, a great part of our growing up, like I said, there's not really enough time to share a lot, but he suffered with an illness and it was alcoholism. My mom prayed for him for years, for years. But out of all her praying, I sit before you, even in this moment, to tell you that God answered her prayers. He answered her prayers. My dad is not an alcoholic to this day. It was because of the prayers of my mom. But I don't have any ills. I don't understand people that say things that happen when they grew up, they get to be 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80 years old, and they are still holding grudges. Your parents did the best that they could do. And to those that didn't understand that there was an illness working there. You don't always see what's going on with people. Sometimes it's mental illnesses. Sometimes it's things that are out of our control. We don't know. But to those that battled with alcoholism, to those that were somehow caught up in a drug situation, whatever it was. Whatever it is, let it go is not worth it. It's not worth it. You deserve to live in peace and they do too. We are all, we're not given manuals for this thing called life. There is no scripted manual. We are all handed the life that we're given and we got to make the best of it. And the best thing we could do is seek God for direction and instruction. That's the best thing we could do. But we're all just down here trying to figure it out. So were your parents. Down here just trying to figure life out and make it work. I got married at 19. I was just a child myself, the way I see it. I don't want to get into my story because like I said, we short on time. I got 12 kids of my own, so I know what it's like to be a mom. And because this is a part, is it, it's a series and this is part one, I'm going to leave it right there on my part. Because we're not talking about me right now. But I'm just saying, I understand. My mom had a van and she voluntarily took church members home all times of night. You know, back in the days we could stay in church. I come from a sanctified church, Pentecostal. We will stay in church till 12 o'clock midnight, honey. Yes, God, it wasn't a dull moment. It was never a dull moment. And we went to church like seven days a week. It was never a dull moment. But what I love about my mom and watching her, like they say, children are watching even when you don't think they are. I was one of those children. My mom would 
would drive church members home because she had a van and a lot of church members would come in on a bus or would catch the trains and would hop trains and, and buses take a couple of them right to get back and forth. A lot of them was, you know, some lived on the north side, west side, you name it. But we go to church, you know, out south. Mama volunteer her van, volunteer her services, volunteer her gas. She wasn't collecting gas money. We had little to nothing. She wasn't accepting gas money, but she voluntarily took the sinks home till two or three in the morning sometimes. And where would her kids be? In the back of the van sleep. Had to go to school the next morning. But it was important to mama that she was a servant and she serviced everybody else. Until her last breath. That is what she was, a servant. To people, and she wouldn't have had it no other way. Every time we tried to have little small personal events, Mama, we're gonna take you out to dinner. Mama, we're gonna do something for your birthday. Mama, we gonna whatever it was. Mama made sure everybody was invited. Did you invite the saints? Did you invite, you know, the church members? Did you tell this one? Did you tell that? She would tell them. No matter how many times we tried to have something private and personal for her, because we like mama, well, you always doing for other people. We're trying to give you a break because we know once the crowd came, somebody was going to find mama. She was going to end up in some deep counsel. She was going to end up praying for somebody or she was going to end up, you know, doing stuff for other people. It was just what mama did. But no matter how hard we try to separate her, at least for a moment, to give her a break, she went right back to doing what she was called to do. And she loved it with every fiber of her being. We didn't have much. We, and these are the shifts, some of the shifts that I'm talking about. When my mom first got married, and like I said, there's not enough time to give a whole bunch of detail. But I really watched her through the hard times, through the shifts, because when she first got married, and my dad, um, when they first began talking, my dad was in the army. Um, they both grew up in the same neighborhood, literally lived across the street. Both families knew each other. All the kids grew up together. You know how they did it back in the days. Now we talk to people overseas and online and try to date folks and marry folks that ain't even here. They way over thousands of miles away. I don't, know. I don't get the logic. But anyway, so they live right across the street from each other. They grew up together. They knew each other. Um, when they graduated, my dad went into the army. He would send checks back home because my mom them. It was a lot of them, right? My grandmother had 10 children and yeah, you know, they didn't have much either. That's where, where she came from. That was her beginning. And my dad would, mind, mind you, not being married, but he would send checks back home and um, my mom would use the checks that he sent and would use it in their household for this, for her siblings. However, she would um, help her mom or whoever, whatever. Um, but that being said, I'm just saying this, just the, the mindsets that people used to have. He was already protecting and providing. He was already doing his part. It was just, it was the things that was put in them and that they put in us. Like the Bible says, even the word of God is the natural and the spiritual. The word of God encourages us to teach it to your children and your children's children and their children, their children to another generation. When we don't teach, this is what happened. This is where society get where we are right now. When mothers don't know their mothers and fathers don't know their fathers, they don't know how to be fathers. Mothers don't know how to be mothers. Everybody's selfish. And what does that leave the next generation? The children. I lost. They're raising themselves. Nobody knows their place. Mothers, get a hold of your children. Get a hold of your households. We all need to return back to God because this is where it started. This is the foundation. The word of God. The word of God teaches all of us. You don't have to be a minister. You don't have to be a pastor. My, my grandmother was a pastor. My mother was a minister. And ministry calls a lot on you. Ministry pulls on your coattail a lot.
but they still made time for their families. They still had to cook. They still had to clean. They still had to take care of 10 children, my mother, nine children, my grandmother, 10 children, myself, 12 children. I'm in ministry as well. But I watched them pray for hours and hours and hours. I watched them shut away and do shut-ins in the closet, both of them. I admired it so much. When God allowed me and placed me in a position, I went the same route. I desired it. I wanted it so bad that I could taste it. And I went after it and God blessed me with it. It's the things, it's what are we putting into them? What kind of examples are we being in front of them? And even with that being said, we weren't so hung up on um, things. Yes, we would look at other kids with name brand things on, name brand shoes and and the nicest uh, little denim outfits, name brand, FUBU, and uh, all kind of names. I don't even name them. But yeah, all kind of names that we could not afford. We couldn't always afford things like that. But my mama would always put into us. You have each other. And you have God. So our faith in God and loving on each other. She always told us to make sure you stay together, love on each other and stick together. Because you are all you have. And honestly, when we didn't have anything, we didn't have this. Is, I'm going to tell you how we grew up. We um, when it was just the first two kids. Again, it's nine of us. Right. When it was just the first two kids, we had a huge big greenhouse, green and white in a beautiful um, neighborhood. Um, we had multiple vehicles. We also had a camper that we used to travel with and go out of state with many different places. Mind you, it was the first two, right? My dad, when he came out the army, he worked for Illinois Bell, had an excellent job. Excellent job. We had a, 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 a house with a yard so big, we could have built another house in the yard. So we were really, really blessed. But when things shifted and things changed, we had moved away to Arizona for a time and in our coming back after so many years, after we stayed in Arizona a few years, in our coming back when my dad tried to um, go back and tried to work for Illinois Bell again I don't really know the full depths of the story, but he wasn't able to and from that the struggles you know, even in our just coming back from Arizona, the struggles began. And because, you know, I don't know, I'm, I'm assuming it was a coping mechanism for my dad, but the drinking, the drinking increased and the drinking increased and it increased because every time he would go out and be gone for, for hours and hours and hours, day after day after day, trying to get jobs here and there, he was always overqualified, overqualified. And he would even go for different jobs and say, you know, I know it says I'm overqualified, but would you just, you know, it's okay. I don't mind. But they still wouldn't hire him because they're like, you know, but well, we would be, it wouldn't be right. And we feel like we'd be forced to have to pay you, you know, what you're worth. And I, I wouldn't feel right. My, my daddy didn't care. He had nine kids and a wife he was trying to support. It wasn't what he was used to, but he was willing to work. We don't even have that mindset nowadays in these young folk. But we saw that the drive was there. Even after we lost everything and we ended up um, after we stayed a little while in Robbins with my grandmother, nine kids and two parents, right? In one room, one small bedroom at that. We did that for so long. Don't ask me how we fit in there. I don't know. We managed. But it's just, it's just a shift. And my mom held it together. She didn't lose faith. She held it together, didn't lose faith. My dad, still there. He could have dipped on us a long time ago. Still there. Thank God for him to this day. Even though my mom has been taken on to glory, my dad's still here. He's still being daddy. And every chance he get, he drop in on me. Drop in on all of us, as a matter of fact. 
But again, it's not Father's Day. But my mom, my mom, oh my God, so much. I remember those syrup sandwiches days. I remember barbecue sandwiches. I eat open pits to this day. Love it. I don't know if they sell an Alaga syrup anymore, but that was that was my syrup sandwiches. And it was fine. I didn't go as far as to, thank you, Lord, have mayonnaise and mustard sandwiches. Others did. But, you know, it's our story. Don't despise the day of small things like the word of God said. Zechariah chapter 4 and verse 10. The first couple of lines. Don't be ashamed. Don't be embarrassed. We lived in a little, a little shack in Markham for, for some years. When they tore it down and removed it, we were so hurt. Because that was part of our history. But we lived in this little rundown shack in Markham. In Markham, Illinois, for some years. We had, when we first moved in there, there was no heat. There was nothing working in that little rundown house. And my daddy rigged some stuff together. He got some, some magic from somewhere because we as little kids didn't really know, understand what he had to do to get it working. But every now and again, that furnace would blow up. And the entire house black soot, including us. We would wake up black soot, our faces covered, looking like black sambo, all in our nose. And the first time it happened, we all laughed at each other because we was looking at, at, you know, black and shiny. Everybody was didn't know what had happened, but we had to clean that house from top to bottom. And it happened quite a few times after that, but we had gotten used to it. And that's what we. We was glad because we had a place to call home. But it's it's what was put in us. It was the way we was raised. It's what mom and daddy put in us. We was thankful for every little thing. There was a few Christmases. We didn't get nothing. But a few Christmases, we got some coloring books and crayons. Not all the high tech stuff and TVs and whatever stuff they had out back then, Nintendos and all that kind of stuff. The very, very first Nintendo we got was um, a green screen that I would never touch, wouldn't even play with, didn't even want to watch others play on it. My sibling, it was used, came from somebody else. It was a green screen. And yeah, just totally uninteresting to me at all. But we didn't grow up with all the name brand stuff. And to this very day, our favorite times, it's not going to Disney World. It's not going to Wisconsin Dells. We can go over to one of our houses and sit in the backyard and just throw something on the grill and laugh and talk about old times and the way we grew up. And we share those stories with our children. And to them, they are the most fascinating stories ever, but it's our true story. It's real life. It's real life. Our water was so rusty in Markham, it smelled like rotten eggs, and we had to literally boil it to the rust settled in the bottom. You could see it in the glass or see it in the pot to try to use it and pour it in the pitcher until you get, you know, it runs out of clear water and the rust start coming up. Then you then you sit it back down, but to try to make something drinkable. Rotten eggs, because we had well water. That's where we came from. So much so that we didn't even know as little children, and I'm going to tell off on me, we didn't even know as little children, it was a little hole on the side of the house. And one day we noticed how it had filled up with water, and it was so hot. The little hole on the side of the house was filled with water. It was so hot out there. We jumped in. A few of us, I ain't calling no names, but a few of us jumped in, and we was telling Mama, you know, we found a pool. Or we made a pool outside. Come to find out, I guess we were so used to the septic water and the well water. You know, we didn't even know that's what we was playing in. <laughs> but look, it cooled us off for that hot day. It cooled us off. We know about washing blankets and dry towels on hand and trying to go and hang it outside on the line, on a rope so it can dry in the sunshine. And hoping, look, hoping tomorrow that it's sunny. But as many times we hung clothes out there and it rained on them again. It made them wet all over again. We had to squeeze them out in our hand. We had a washboard in the tub. Yes, it's me. Had a washboard in the tub. 
trying to scrub big blankets and dry towels by hand. I had to squeeze them out by hand. Sure did. I remember the day of small things and I don't despise them. I don't despise the way I came. I don't despise nothing my mom did. I don't despise nothing my dad did. I love them eternally with all of my being. And if I had my mom down here to do it again, I'd do it all over again. But I love her more. I'd spend more time with her. I'd visit her more. I'd call her more. I'd stay there. I'd stay there. At this point, all problem. Look, all nine of us, if we had the opportunity, we're probably trying to squeeze and stay in the same house. Just because. If we knew what we knew or what we know today, if we knew then what we know now, oh my God, I encourage you, spend time with your parents. Love on your parents. Hard times won't be with you always, and neither will your parents. I tell my kids right now, they are so extremely blessed compared to the way we came, and I don't despise it because it drew us closer. It made us love on one another. It made us look out for each other right now. We can make a nine-way chat box, chat call right now and stay on the phone for hours. But mama and daddy did that. When there was nobody else but us. Because there wasn't nobody popping up in Markham to see us. Wasn't nobody popping up in Markham to visit. Wasn't nobody popping up in Markham to bring us nothing. As y'all say, it was us against the world. That's how we were. We know about the um, selling candy on the streets that a lot of people look down on. And a lot of people despise. Man, I hated it. We sold peanuts. My mom sold. She had a designated spot on the street for years. Selling for the ministry. Peanuts, banks, pillows, Mother's Day things that she would literally put together and create herself. I watched her and I learned how and I started creating my own things. I wasn't made to sell anything. I wasn't forced to sell anything. I asked, could I sell? And I took pride in it and I enjoyed it and I loved it. And if I could do it today, I would do it all over again. I ride past those spots and I remember all the years we made other folk happy. Yes, we were selling for the ministry. We wasn't pocketing the money and I don't regret it. I don't regret it. Why should we build our lavish houses and let the house of God go lacking as scripture reads? It's in the scripture. And no, we didn't have much. I remember there, these are good memories to me. I remember spending an entire summer. Sister Mildred, one of the church members, Love her dearly. Oh, my God. And we got even closer before the Lord took her. She's not here as well. Another mother. One of my mother figures. Um, Came and picked me up. A little bitty girl. This Before times is as crazy as they are. A little girl. Um, I don't really remember what grade I was in. I want to say between eighth and ninth grade, freshman in high school. Came and picked me up one summer. Her trunk was loaded with boxes and boxes and boxes of candy to sell the whole boxes of uh, like M&Ms and they had um, the crunch bars and the caramel bars back in the day with the almonds. Yeah, those fundraising boxes, it said fundraising on the box. Loaded. Came and grabbed me one Saturday. Mind you, I did it all the time. But this was one particular story. Came and grabbed me one Saturday and took me to a neighborhood and a young um, and another young man named Freddie. She dropped him off on one side of the neighborhood, you know, with a couple of boxes. And she took me to the other side of the neighborhood. Yes, by myself. And I had two boxes. She would give us as much as we can carry. And when we emptied those boxes, I would even, I was so good. Got it from my mama, y'all. But I was so good at it that even when they would 
um, give me like a 10 because every bar was a dollar. Give me like a 10 or whatever and just bless me and give extra or whatever or this or even just give me something to say, I don't eat chocolate, you eat it, baby, and still give me some money. I would give it, gave it all to the church. We'll give it all to them. I didn't even look for nothing. I didn't try to eat a candy bar when I was hungry. I didn't try to stick nothing in my pocket. Didn't want it. Didn't want it. I watched that my mother gave like that. And yes, I could walk for hours from the time she took me out there to the, the sun start going down in the evening. But guess what? I emptied that trunk, me and that young, that young man. And look forward to when I empty two boxes, I will rush back to the car for two more. Enjoyed it. I didn't despise it. And it wasn't even mine. I wasn't even pocketing the money. And no, she didn't take me nowhere to eat and didn't give me nothing or whatever. I wasn't looking for it. I was just looking forward to emptying that trunk and taking me back home to mom. But those days of small things, I did not despise. I appreciate them to this day. And I would to God, my kids had those opportunities. Because every shift that mama went through, she was built for it. I don't know how, but it was like God built her for it. She didn't crack and crumble. Every time something didn't work out, she stood. She stood as a as a company keeper, as a provider, as a, oh, my gosh, she fills so many shoes. And when I tell you, even in ministry, not just at home, she did her part at home. She did more for the ministry because she was gone for the ministry a lot. Even in traveling. She did more for the ministry, and, and then that's why my dad came in. And we would be on my dad, and he did his part. And I'm thankful to God. I, like I said, I didn't want to get off talking about my daddy, but I love my daddy. Even with dealing with alcoholism, we never had to worry about him. Y'all, folks, is crazy nowadays. We never had to worry about him climbing in bed, one of us. I don't care how drunk he was. We never had to worry about him filling up on nobody, on none of us. No, we never had no inappropriate nothing. We may have some inappropriate language <laughs> going on up in there at times, but, but yeah. And my dad was all about respecting my mom. You will not. Oh my God. You ain't going to disrespect him because he'll roll up on you, but you will not disrespect my mom. Not by any means. And like I said, I don't want to get off of that. I don't mention him. I'm I'm almost about to start talking about him. Father's Day coming or the next part. This is part one talking about mothers. I would to God that the mothers today could take on from real mothers. It's not all about you going to get massages, getting your hair done, spending the rent money on nails and hair and all this stuff. What about the children? They're going lacking. The children were put first. There were sacrifices made as mothers. That's what we were created for. Just like Jesus himself always sacrificed of himself. So much so people was coming. The multitude was coming all times of night. Jesus had to go up into to the mountains. Try to run away to get some peace. Even in that though. He was praying. He was talking to the father. He was still doing something on behalf of the people, always giving of himself. And that's what real mothers do. Don't let society fool you. Don't let society taint your mind and poison you. I'm not telling you, you know, to not take care of yourself, but I'm telling you. God will allow you to make time for that when you do what you're supposed to do first. It is a sacrifice. I can tell you that myself. Yes, it is a sacrifice as a mom. It is because children are with moms. I like to say 99.9% .9 of the times. My husband always worked. And again, I'm going into another part. This ain't part one. I'm going to bring it on back. Mama taught me a lot. She didn't just teach the basic stuff like washing dishes, cooking. Uh, we got that part. We got the basics. We got the necessities. But she 
taught us how to love, how to be nurturing, how to care for other people, how to stick together, how to pray for others. My mom also would get up at 3 a.m. in the morning. A lot of y'all ain't going ain't gonna to hear this part. You ain't going to do this. But even if you don't do it like she did it, make sure you get together and pray. 3 a.m. in the morning, she will wake us up. Yeah, we had to go to school in the morning. But guess what? If God don't wake us up in the morning, ain't nobody going nowhere. She'll wake us up and we'll be in the living room, crawling around in prayer, following behind my mom. That taught me a lot. I can't speak on behalf of all my siblings, but that taught me a lot. Like I said, we get together, you know, laugh foolishly and, and, and kid around like children do, but appreciate it. Oh, my God, do we ever. We are close to this day because of mom and daddy. We depend on each other. We lean on each other. We, uh, we, we miss each other. When we're not around or when we don't hear each other, you know, for a span of time. We miss each other. How many siblings, you know, how many families still do that? Nowadays, they call that lame. Family gatherings. And just getting together and talk and be with each other and spend time with each other. That's supposed to be lame nowadays. Love on your moms. I just wanted to spend a moment talking about my mom. I got the basics from her, but I learned how to hustle too from my mom. That those things are ingrained in us. She not only sold, but she went, you know, there were those out and went on different spots. And helped us say, I can't get into that aspect either because that's going to take me way off and my time going to get up to two hours. Thank God for them as well. Sister Russian was one of them. Sister Flor, oh my God. I can't, I'm naming all these names and look, I thank God for all the people that God placed in our lives. My mom was literally the best. But she loved everybody like she loved us. As a matter of fact, it was no doubt in neither one of us, none of us, no doubt in none of our minds that my mom loved us. But you can ask anybody that's not our siblings and ask them what type of woman my mother was. My mother gave, 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 and gave until there was nothing left to give. And from our standpoint, we have not, we started out with nothing to give. Go figure. But it made us thankful and grateful and appreciative to this day because the things that mama poured into us, you cannot buy. Not on eBay, not on Amazon. You cannot buy anywhere. It's not for sale. And those things are respect, honor, love, charity, value, generosity, meekness, humility, obedience, love. Grace, all those things, unity, empathy, looking out for each other, covering. My mama died at an early age. She was only in her early 60s. That's all right. I don't care to put the exact number out there. That's all right. But she died at a young age. She did. But she had a lot on her plate. She wore many, 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 many hats. She was a poet. She was a writer. She desired to be a lawyer when she graduated out of school, but God had other plans for her. But she did so much more than that. Even though she didn't fulfill her dream as a lawyer. She fulfilled her dream in so many other areas. She was a wedding coordinator. Everybody that got married for years and years and years in Christ Miracle Healing Center Church for years and years and years. My mom coordinated their weddings. The little dance marches, 
all of it. She wore many, many hats. I can't even touch all the things that she did in giving of herself. It was no way to be rusted out. She was definitely worn out for the sake of Christ. She didn't sit still long enough to rust out. And I admired that. I love my mom dearly. I'm thankful to God I held it together to make it through this life. Because my mom is all of my heartstrings and then some. Even now. Even now, and she's been gone since 2009. <sighs> to those of you that still have your moms, love your mom. Love on her more than you look. Make her closer than your best friend. Make sure she's closer than your BFF. Because there are going to come some times that you would just long to hear her voice. You would just long to you know, to hug her or to kiss her or to be in her presence, even if she don't say a word, just be able to see her visibly in the flesh. There are some days you're just going to long for her to be in the earth. Even if you can't drive over and see her, even if you can't speak to her on the phone, just knowing that she's still here is a level of comfort that you will never know and never understand until she's gone. Love your mothers. Love on your parents. Because the Bible tells us if we love on our parents, when we love on our parents, that God will extend our days in the earth for being good to our parents. Why? Because those that are real parents and is doing the thing the right way and understand the assignment, they love for real. And they know that sacrifice is a part of that love. You don't compare, right? You don't compare, well, I did this and you expect this and I didn't know. You don't compare. You just give of yourself willingly and lovingly. As a matter of fact, you don't even do it expecting something in return. It would be nice, but you don't do it for that reason. Not when you love for real. Not when you understand the assignment. The assignment came from God. And if God chose to make you a parent, then you stand in those shoes and don't let nobody remove you from that position. I tell people all the time, you can have sex all day. Except God put a baby there. It's his doing. If he allows the seed to be planted, he breathes life into it. He gives it the mobility. He gives it the health and the strength. So it's God's doing. It goes far beyond the people that came together. It's God's doing. And if God allowed you to be in the shoes of a parent, however it came about, you stand in those shoes and don't let no devil in hell remove you from that position. Soldier, stand your ground and do that that God has assigned you to do. And don't let nobody, not living, not the dead or the unborn, don't let nobody do it better than you. Father God, in Jesus' name, thank you, God, for this gathering together and the meeting of our God, just to discover the found that you laid, God, and to discuss the representation of mothers, God, you gave us as mothers a, a representation of you. You created us in your image and your likeness, and you gave us that that is of you. You penetrated the mother's vessel, the mother's being, the mother's heart, and you instilled a lot of those things internally, God, the nurturing, the compassion, the gentleness, love, and all these other things that you gave us, God, you gave them to us for a reason. Because just like you told everything that you created to 
reproduce in and of itself. God, you gave us an assignment to reproduce other images that are created in your likeness and in your image. You gave us the instruction. You gave us the assignment to procreate. Even though society is trying to destroy it, you gave us the assignment, God, the creator of all things. You gave us the assignment to procreate. God, help us to understand the assignment and to know our value. There is value in the mother's that nobody can take away. There's value in the fathers that nobody can take away. But God, there is also value in the children. If we could all just be reminded of our positions and play our positions well, God, remind us of the assignment that you gave each and every one of us and teach us how to play our positions well, that the living, the dead, nor the unborn can do it better. In the name of Jesus, God, Help us all to understand the assignments that we were given. You chose us to stand in the place of mothers in motherhood. You chose us to stand in the place of fathers in fatherhood. Whoever you've given that assignment, God, teach them to understand the assignment. Teach us as mothers to understand the assignment that we have to set things in order. We have to build on the foundation and the foundation is you. And in order to be a wise woman and a wise man, to build a strong foundation, God, it has to be built on you, the solid rock. Because the Bible teaches us in the book of Matthew, chapter 7, verses 24 through 27, God, that if we build our house on anything else, we are building on sinking sand. Father, in the name of Jesus, God, remind us, whether we're mothers or fathers or children, of them both. Remind us of our position and teach us how to play our position accordingly and teach us how to stand in that position accordingly and take it seriously in the matchless name of Jesus. In your mighty name, God. And again, I just want to say, I love you all mothers Understand that you have a vitally important role to play in the next generation that are coming up in this generation. We ain't going to even talk about the next one. In this one, understand the role you play. You cannot be buddies and forget to be a mother. You cannot be, you can be a friend to your children, but you cannot, there's a balance. You cannot forget to be a mother. You have to also be a mother. And if you do the mother thing right, if you get the mothering assignment correct, then your children will automatically consider you a friend. But if you decide to be a friend because you don't want to be a mother, that whole thing going to go left. Because God didn't create you to be their friend. He created you to be a mother. And that thing works hand in hand. If you are mothering correctly, when you get the mother aspect, get the mother component right. When you get the part that you're supposed to do right, everything else will fall in line according to the word of God. When we keep him first, the word of God says everything else will fall in line. When we keep his assignment first to be a mother, And to teach as mothers should, being a friend will come easy. It'll just fall right in line. Amen. So focus, let us focus on the job at hand. Let us focus on the assignment that God gave us. Because if we are not teaching and the fathers are at work, then who's teaching? That's how we get to where we are right now. And I'm sorry, I'm not trying to open this thing back up. But we got to remember our places. And to those single mothers that have to do the balance of the father and the mother. You're doing an awesome job, sis. You're doing an awesome job. Just remember to put God at the forefront. And even if he don't send you a man to fill those shoes In your life, you can always depend on 
him. But I'm not trying to choose for you. Either way you go, you need to put God first. Whether it's a man in your life or not, because you don't want to put the wrong type of man over your children if you're a single mom. And that's another story for another day. But you all be safe, love on each other, and remember the assignment, okay? Remember the assignment. See y'all next time. This has been your Faith Walk and your Love Talk podcast. I am your host, Gina Brooks, and we will get together again for Mother's Meltdowns and Identity Crisis Part 2. You all be blessed and good evening.